Ladies and gentlemen, this is your reaction. And this is Space Elevator, science fiction or the future of mankind by the channel Kuzgazad in a nutshell. So, space elevators, are they, are they our thing that we should talk about? That, what? There's a grammar mistake there. So yeah, space elevator basically. Uh, I think this is the, you know, the tether, uh, you know, basically going all the way to, I guess, geosynchronous orbit. And it basically, uh, you know, you can send things in space easier. Is that what it's for? I guess for the travel purpose or something. I don't know. Uh, I don't know much about space elevator, but yeah, it's going to be a fun video. I've done quite a few Kuzgazad video already. If you haven't seen them, check out the cards. There's a playlist I wrote for it. Kuzgazad reactions, something like that, uh, with all my Kuzgazad video reactions. Uh, check out the playlist too, like CGB Grey, Internet Historian, History, or Simplified, or Lisakashi Production. And yeah, let's watch this. It's hard to get to space. As much as we all wish there were an easy and affordable way to see our planet floating in the dark, right now, the only way is to become an astronaut or a billionaire. But there is a concept that might make it possible while serving as the starting point for the exploration of the universe, the space elevator. How exactly does it work? Oh yeah, this is the old video. To understand how a space elevator will get us into space, we must first understand what an orbit is. Being in orbit basically means falling towards something, but moving fast enough to miss. If you throw a ball on Earth, it makes an arc through the air and then hits the ground. In space, gravity makes you move much the same way, but if you move sideways fast enough, the curvature of the Earth makes the ground fall away beneath you as fast as gravity pulls you towards it. So, to enter Earth's orbit, rocket... It's awesome to think that Isaac Newton basically first, uh, you know, realized what gravity is, and as soon as he realized that, he just looked at looked at the moon. Not immediately, but you know, basically he just after that realized, oh, look at the moon. So I can see how the apple is falling, everything is falling. There's gravity. So moon is doing the same thing. Moon is falling towards the earth, but it's you know it's going in sideways motion, you know fast enough that it's falling but it's never reaching the earth and it's rotating it so orbit newton you know discovers and wrote the all the f formulas and the laws of you know basically uh, orbit and just uh, gave us the formula of that that uh, we used uh, you know in all the space missions and everything uh, isaac newton was a really brilliant man right and basically orbit is just you're falling towards the object it's you're just in free fall all the time Rockets have to go up and sideways fast. By contrast, a space elevator taps into energy from the Earth's rotation to get the cargo going fast. Imagine a child spinning a toy on a rope with an ant on the child's hand. As the ant climbs out along the rope, it starts to move faster and faster as it ascends. Compared to rockets, with cargo launched on an elevator, you only need to provide the energy to go up. Fast sideways movement comes free with the Earth's rotation. But a space elevator would, without a doubt, be the single largest and most expensive structure ever built by... Yeah, but, you know, nothing is free in a sense. Yes, you know, Earth's rotation is free and they would provide it, but all that energy is going to transform into the tether now. So tether has to be really strong, right? Because there's no such thing as free shit. If you do that, yes, Earth's rotation is going to help you along with that. But as soon as you start to go up, basically, uh, you're putting way too much str you know, strain on the tether. Your tether has to be really, really strong. And uh, I don't even... Do we have something that's strong? Because it depends on the payload in the end. So if uh, something is uh, really heavy, do we have powerful tethers that can sustain that? I don't know. And what about the energy to get something uh, in the sky? I don't know. Again, it's uh, dependent on the payload, but I think, you know, I, I think all the energy we could muster somewhere, right? I mean, if we can create some kind of skyhook, we can create uh, uh, some form of, I guess, solar uh, solar panel plant near it to, uh, you know, energize it. It's, uh, it's not that far-fetched to think. So maybe we could do it, but I think the tether would be the real issue. Like, uh, how strong you're going to make the tether? Like humans. So, is it worth it? It all comes down to costs. 
Rockets burn a huge amount of rocket fuel just to get a small amount of cargo into space. At current prices, it costs about $20,000 to put one kilogram of payload into space. That's $1.3 million for the average human, $40 million for your car, billions for an international space station. <laughs> Wait a minute, is that, is that Elon Musk's uh, jab there? Wait a minute, did he do that around this time, 2016? I don't know when. When did he send that car, Tesla Roadster, it was on Mars or something? Because our, did he do that before 2016? Because if he didn't, that's some weird coincidence. This immense cost is one of the major limitations of human spaceflight. Even with advancing technology, this cost isn't likely to be comparable with the price of an airline ticket anytime soon. A space elevator would solve this problem. I don't know, uh, reusable rockets, that probably, you know, brought down the cost. Not that much, but still, that's, uh, that would have, you know, brought down somewhat of the cost. After construction, a space elevator is projected to reduce the cost 100-fold to $200 per kilogram. If an inexpensive space elevator costs $20 billion, then we'll recoup our losses after launching only 1,000 tons, close to the weight of two international space stations. So what would a space elevator look like in real life? A space elevator has four major components. The tether, anchor, counterweight, and climber. The elevator part of the space elevator is the tether and the climber. It extends from the surface of the Earth to space. The, the more far out the tether goes, the more strain it becomes to put on it, right? So, I don't know, man. The climber is like a conventional elevator carriage, a chamber that works its way up and down the tether. At the base would be an anchor, pinning the tether to the earth, along with a port for climbers. At the top is the counterweight, which holds up the tether. The tether is held tight like a rope and supported from above by the tension from the counterweight, located higher than 36,000 kilometers above the earth's surface. Surface. At the counterweight could be a space station, a launching point for all missions from the spaceport elevator. But can we actually build one? It's hard to say. The biggest challenge is the tether. It needs to be light, affordable, and more stable than any material we can produce right now. There are promising materials like graphene and diamond nanothreads, but even they may not be strong enough. And aside from being incredibly strong, the tether would also have to withstand atmospheric corrosion, radiation, and micrometeorite and debris impacts. So, yeah, Additionally, it takes several days. To we just uh, you know, saw the video from Kazgazad about that yesterday. All right, all the shit that is in the low Earth orbit, right? Hundreds of thousands, millions of debris that is just floating there. And, you know, we might come to a point where we won't be able to go in space. I don't think that, that that's what's going to happen. It will probably force our hand to spend money into clearing it. But yeah, yeah, those all things are going to be a problem, right? Because uh, at what? Like a small shard of glass or something traveling at 30,000 kilometers per hour hitting the tether. That would be bad. To climb the elevator. How do we power the climber? It requires a lot of energy to go up. Yeah. Do we need a nuclear reactor on our elevator carriage? Yeah, I think solar would Or do we beam it power from the ground with a super-powered laser? And where do we get the raw materials for a 36,000-kilometer-long tether? Do we make it on Earth and launch it into space, or do we make it in space and lower it down to the Earth? Could asteroid mining be the answer? Put simply, there are still some major technological hurdles to overcome. And a space elevator is not without risk. You know what I just remember? Right now, uh, Earth and the Moon is in tug of war type of thing. Not tug of war. I don't know. Basically, somewhat of war. There will be a day, long in the future, but there will be a day where Moon and Earth will be landlocked, right? Moon will stay its specific posi position in the sky compared to the Earth. So we can just attach a tether at that time. It would become some kind of a space elevator, wouldn't it? Because now Moon is basically locked to the Earth, right? It will be landlocked, basically. It will be far in the future, but that could easily be, a, easily be a space elevator. Should the tether break, it would collapse in spectacular style. If it oh, breaks yeah. near the anchor, the force exerted by the counterweight will cause the entire elevator to rise up, ascending into space. Should it break near the counterweight, the tether will fall, wrapping around the world and whipping the end off. The resulting debris in orbit could pose serious problems to future spaceflight. If we build a space elevator on Earth, we have to do it right the first time. Yeah. For these reasons, some experts have proposed first building a space elevator on the Moon. The Moon's gravity is much weaker than the Earth's, so a flimsier but existent material like Kevlar could serve as a tether. 
Even with all these challenges, the payoff of having a working space elevator would be immense. It might be the first step to truly becoming a spacefaring civilization. Maybe we will never build a space elevator, but in trying to do so, we might learn an awful lot. And when it comes to the exploration of the universe, there can't be too many dreams of a glorious future. This video was sponsored. Yeah, so space elevator basically. Yep, there we go. Space elevator. Basically, it's so far in the so basically in orbit, right? Geosynchronous orbit, probably. That uh, because of centrifugal forces, you know, it uh, it would require immense level of strength in that tether if we create it, and all the you know basically debris and things and all the radiation, it would be a problem. So the more far, the heavier cargo you load up. Right, the more strain will start to pick up because this thing wants to just fly off straight. But, you know, Earth's rotation would, you know, try to pull it toward and keep it, you know, basically around the Earth. So centrifugal forces basically would create so much stress on top. So you need really strong material. But yeah, I think we can do it, but it's not going to happen anytime soon. Alright people, that was Space Elevator by the channel Kuzgaza and Nutshell. If you like more excellent, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the Rick Sunday, there's a link in the description. Check out the castle, basically the link cards, and yeah, I'll see you next time.